This is part 36 of ASP.NET Web API tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss versioning a Web API service using a query string parameter. So here is what we want to do. Notice in the URI, we've got a query string parameter V. V stands for version. If the version value is 1, then we want the Web API service to return version 1 students. If it is 2, then return version 2 students. Before we implement versioning using a query string parameter, first let's understand how a controller is selected in Web API. When a request is issued to this URI, API for slash students for slash 1, in Web API, out of the box, we have this class called default HTTP controller selector. Within this class, we have this method, select controller method. So this method selects the controller depending on the information it has in the URI. In the URI here, we've got two pieces of information. Students is the name of the controller and one is the student ID value. So it looks at this URI, looks at the controller name, students controller. So within our application, it tries to find a controller, students controller, and then returns that. That's how the default controller selection works out of the box in Web API. But this default implementation will not work for us because in the first place, in our project, we don't have students controller. Instead, we have students v1 controller and students v2 controller. So depending on the query string parameter value, so if the value for that v is 1, then we want students v1 controller to be selected. If it is 2, then we want students v2 controller to be selected. It's not students controller. As a matter of fact, we don't have students controller in our Web API project. So this default implementation of controller selector is not going to work for us. So we need to come up with our own custom controller selection implementation. So let's see how to do that now. This is the same project that we worked with in our previous video. To this project, let's add a new folder. Let's name it custom. We're going to place our custom controller selector file in this folder. So let's add a new class file to this folder. Let's name it custom controller selector. Notice the class is also named custom controller selector. The first thing that we're going to do here is make this class derive from this default HTTP controller selector class provided by the Web API framework. This class in turn implements IHTTP controller selector interface. So let's make our custom controller selector derived from default HTTP controller selector class. This class is present in a different namespace, system.web.http.dispatcher. So let's bring that namespace in. The next thing that we're going to do is provide a constructor for our custom controller selector. This constructor is going to have a parameter of type HTTP configuration. And this class is present in system.web.http namespace. Let's name the parameter config. And let's also create a private variable of type HTTP configuration within our class. Let's name the private variable underscore config. And let's initialize the private variable with the constructor parameter. Another thing that we want to do is pass this HTTP configuration object to the base class constructor. And to do that, we're going to use the base keyword and then pass the config object to that. Now, we want to override the default implementation provided by this default HTTP controller selector. To do that, we are going to override this select controller function within this base class default HTTP controller selector. So let's type the keyword override. And when we press space, we can see select controller method. And when we select that, we have the method stub generated. Notice this method has the request object coming in as a parameter. The first thing that we want to do here is retrieve all the controllers that we have in our web API project. To do that, we're going to use this method get controller mapping. And this method returns us all the controllers. And if you look at this controllers folder, we have got five controllers. But this method is going to return only four controllers. That's because if you look at this home controller, this is not a Web API controller. It's an MVC controller. And this method is going to return only Web API controllers. The rest of them are Web API controllers. We know a Web API controller derives from this base class API controller. 
So let's store all the Web API controllers in a variable. Let's call the variable controllers. And we also want to retrieve route data. So let's create a variable called route data. Now, if a user issues a request to a URI that looks like this, within the URI, we have two pieces of information. The name of the controller, which is students, and student ID value, which is one. So let's retrieve that route data. To do that, we are going to make use of the request object that is coming into the method as a parameter. And on that, let's call get route data method. And we know within this variable, we have the name of the controller. So let's create a variable here. Let's call it controller name equals route data. It has got values and we have this key controller, which is going to give us the name of the controller. Let's convert that to string. So in this variable now, we have the name of the controller. If a user issues a request to this URI, the name of the controller is going to be students, which is what will be saved in this uh, variable controller name. Now, if we issue a request to a URI like this, then we know that we're going to have this query string parameter v. So we want to retrieve that query string parameter value. So let's create a variable of type string. Let's call this version number and initialize it to a value of one. Let's create another variable. Let's call this version query string. And we want to read just the query string part of the URI, v equals one or v equals two. To do that, we're going to make use of this class, HTTP utility, which has got this method parse query string. And to that, we're going to pass the request object request URI dot query property. And now we want to check if the version query string has got a parameter with the name v and if it is not equal to null then what we want to do we want to initialize this variable with the value that we have in this query string parameter v so at this point in this variable we will either have one or two depending on to which uri the user has issued the request now depending on this version number we want to select either students v1 controller or students v2 controller. So if version number equals one, then we want the controller name to be students v1. At this point right here, the controller name will be students because when we issue a request to this URI, to any of these URIs, look at this, the name of the controller is students. So that's what we will have in this variable. But if the version number is one, then to that controller name, we want to append v1. Else, if the version number is 2, then we want to append v2. So, at this point, depending on to which URI the user has issued the request, if the query string parameter value is 1, then the name of the controller will be students v1. If it is 2, then the name of the controller will be students v2. So, all that is left to do is to return the respective controller. If you look at the return type of this method, it is HTTP controller descriptor. So, let's create a variable of this type. Let's call it controller descriptor. Now, if you look at this variable, this contains all Web API controllers in our Web API project. And if you look at its type, it's a dictionary of string HTTP controller descriptor. So within this dictionary, we will have to find the controller that we are looking for and return that respective controller. To find the controller within the dictionary, we're going to use this method, try get value. And this method has got two parameters. The first parameter is the key. That is nothing but the name of the controller that we are looking for. And the second parameter is the output parameter. So let's use the out keyword and look at its type. It is HTTP controller descriptor and we already have a variable of that type. So let's pass that as the second parameter. So what does this method do? This method tries to find a controller with the key that we have specified. If it finds it, it's going to initialize this variable with the respective controller and this method will return true. If it doesn't find the controller that we are looking for, then it's going to return false. It doesn't throw an exception.
and it's better to use try get value because when a user issues a request to a web API service they can specify anything as the controller name in the URI if they specify ABC as the controller name then in this controllers collection we don't have a controller with the name ABC so in that case we don't want this method to throw an exception that's the reason why we're using try get value so if try get value returns true then that means we have found the controller that we are looking for in that case simply return the controller if it has not found the controller that we are looking for then it doesn't come inside this if block in that case simply return null and the web API pipeline is going to do whatever it has to do so that's our first step implement a custom controller selector the next step is to replace the default controller selector with our custom controller selector. This is done in webapiconfig.cs file. So within our webapiconfig.cs file, let's use this config object. So config.services.replace. We want to replace iHttp controller selector. This type is present in a different namespace. So let's bring that namespace in. So we want to replace this I HTTP controller selector with our custom controller selector. The namespace for our custom controller selector is webapi.custom. We will have to bring that namespace in as well. So let's first bring in webapi.custom namespace. And our custom controller selector constructor expects config object. And we already have the config object coming into this method as a parameter so let's pass that config object so we have replaced the default controller selector with our own custom controller selector that's our second step the third step is to include this default route in our web api config.cs file at the moment we don't have any default routes so let's include a default route let's uncomment this and let's name it default route we can give it any name we want and the default route is going to be api and then we're going to have a placeholder for controller and an id parameter that's our default route and we don't want the controller to be initialized to v1 the id parameter is optional that's our default route that's our third step and the final step is to remove all these route attributes from the respective action methods within students v1 and students v2 controllers so let's go ahead and do that so let's first do that in students v1 controller let's get rid of the route attributes and let's do the same thing within students v2 controller so those are all the steps required let's run our application now by pressing control f5 we are on the home page let's navigate to slash api slash students notice at the moment we are not specifying the version query string parameter so by default here we're getting student version one objects that's because if you look at the version number we have defaulted it to one now if we specify a specific version using the query string parameter we get that specific version so here we're getting student version two objects if I specify the version as 1 and then we get student version 1 objects as expected. Thank you for listening and have a great day.